Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a bit lit, but um, today we're doing a mukbang. If you don't already know, get to know. My name's Gary, aka The Plastic Boy. I um, actually pull up so many polls on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, asking to do like questions and stuff. This is my first mukbang. Let me show you the food. So we have here, so we have lobster, we've got some corn, we've got some prawns. We also have um, different sauces. I think we have sweet garlic and I'm not sure what, what's on here, but oh guys, I'm gonna try and pull it in camera to eat. So if you wanna see what's happened in this mukbang, keep watching, cause it's gonna be hella long. So I suggest you get a snack, a drink, and a good seat because it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be juicy, juicy girl. girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back. Um, I'm not sure what sauce to do first. Hold on, let me just smell the sauces. Okay, that smells nice. That is, I feel like it's just a garlic one. Hold on. Oh, chat. Oh, oh, it smells banging. Okay, I'm gonna put that all over. Okay, so this food is actually from Be Fed. If you're from London, I'm gonna put all the description in the link down below. She just hooked it up. Obviously, I paid her because why not? It's in um, Corona time. Like, you've got to. Did the sauce go in my eye? Does it? <gasps> actually, I've actually never done a mukbang, but this food looks so lit. It looks so good. It tastes amazing. So, I'm trying to think. Oh my god. Maybe we might close that. I'm trying to think how to go through this. So, I might do Facebook, Instagram, dilemmas, and what you guys have asked me to speak about. Um, this is going to be quite raw. It's going to be a long video. I want to keep it to like maybe 25 to 30 minutes just so it isn't like a movie. We're not trying to be um, Disney Plus here. Oh my God, I've got some wine as well. Yes! I've got, um, this is Whispering Angel. I put this on my Instagram stories today. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's at The Plastic Boy, but apparently this is a really famous wine in um, America. So, <laughs> so we're gonna get ready. I'm gonna just decide what to start first because girl, girl. Oh, this is nice. Lipstick is Gucci, lip liner is Colourpop, BFF4, get to know. Okay, so let's start with Instagram. I'm really scared because I've never done a mukbang before, so I'm not sure how you do this. Oh, oh, chow. This is messy, but oh my God, hold on. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate people eating, so that's your Instagram. This is, oh my gosh, it's so fucking good. Okay, so in today's mukbang, I want to speak about a few different things. So I've asked you guys to send me some questions, dilemmas, ask me anything you want. Um, I'm going to speak about a few things. Um, a lot of you guys didn't want to know what I've been doing during isolation. Oh my God, it's so good. Ugh. But, no words of a lie. Oh my God. Oh my God. Disgusting! Isolation, I've been fucking hard. I live by myself. I have no lie, I was going crazy. So, I said in the video, in my last two videos, that I had a family member that was sick. And basically, my mom got corona um, about two weeks ago. She's feeling much better now. My sister got corona. Um, she got it the worst. She had to go to hospital. Guys, I was actually going crazy, but she's home now. All doing good. I know a lot of you guys want to know the update, but I don't really like talking about my family much on social media because it's so personal to me, but they're all doing good. What I'm gonna say is stay home, stay safe, and they're doing blessed, but thank you so much. So let's get into the juicy questions period. Okay, so we'll start with Instagram. So these questions are a bit mad. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Someone goes, am I a top or a bottom or both like me? So, I feel like that's a question people get asked a lot. Like, when you're gay, are you a top or a bottom? Do you give or you receive? With me, well, bitch, I'm a good top. That's all I'm going to fucking say. I'm a good top, period. I am wigless. I feel like in, when you're gay, it's really good to do both, like be versatile. But um, I don't, re I'm not a very sexual pair. Well, I just, I don't know, it's quite hard. Like, I wouldn't go out to seek something. 
But um, I do feel like being a top or bottom or versatile can definitely affect your relationship because imagine you meet a guy yet yeah, and you're both tops. So to all the straight people that are watching, um, <laughs> so a top is basically you give and a bottom is you receive the dick. Versatile, you can do both. So I'll probably say I'm more top, but um, I don't know. I feel like people can reverse. You can learn, but I definitely say I'm more top. But yeah, thanks for that question. But you know, <laughs> oh, you nasty. Um, the second question is okay. Or well, someone said, "Sorry, I should be naughty." Who is your celebrity crush, and are you in any kind of a romantic relationship? Well, I was seeing someone. But I'm not sure what's happening with that situation. Because we have Corona. I'm at home alone. Oh, bitch. Look. look. How about... How about it is? Be fed if you watch this. How about it... How? Oh. oh, my God. So, I don't really crush on celebrities like that. Like, I don't really, like, do it. Like, I feel like there are some hot celebs. Like, um, older black... Odell Beckham Jr., um, Trey Songs, Gucci Mane, um, who else? Who else is hot? The Game, 50 Cent. A few other people, I don't really crush on celebs like that though. I feel like if I crush on someone that's not obtainable, do you know what I mean? But, um, oh God, this is so fucking good. Oh my God, and I don't even bang seafood like that, but... With celeb culture, I don't really, I'm like, I like celeb culture, but I don't fancy celebs like that. I can appreciate them, but um, as far as relationship, um, I was seeing someone, but I'm just not sure where that is at the moment. But um, I'll, I'll dive into that more in the video, but you know. <laughs> These questions are all over the place, come to Instagram first, but I'm sorry. But just enjoy the video and get a snap, bitch. Period. That's a good question. What's the hardest part about being an influencer and what is the best part? So, the hardest part about being an influencer is... I'd probably say working from home. Is this an egg? Is this an egg? I don't really like eggs. Why does this give me food poison? Hold on. Oh my God. It's nice. So, being an influencer isn't easy. I'm going to tell you a story, yeah? Someone messaged me the other day, like two days ago, saying, hey Gary, I been following you for a long time number one you didn't follow me um i think i have a really unique look i want to be an influencer can you give me any tips first of all bitch i went on your page and you haven't posted since last year december when it was my birthday so what do you want to be an influencer doing which i was confused about but i always try and be nice to people because this guy was you didn't follow me, but I kind of find it rude because you definitely sent a generic message to everyone because it was like, hey babes. And when you say hey babes, it means, hi, I don't know your name, but answer my damn question, bitch. So, I said to him, hey babes, I can see you don't follow me, but I'm going to give you some information. What do you want to be? What do you want to do beauty? Do you want to do fashion? What do you want to do? So, going back to the question, working from home is so hard because you're your own boss. I used to work in retail for, like, I've worked in retail since I've been 16. I've always worked. I haven't always worked in retail. I've worked for the Swine Flu Hotline. I've worked for Netta Porter. I've worked for Mr. Porter. I've worked for um, Southridges. I've worked for Top Man. Oh my God. Oh my God. Every fucking brand you can think of. I've been okay. Mac, when you work for yourself, it's hard because when you wake up in the morning, you have to decide what are you going to create today? What content are you going to create? Are you going to create something that's trending? Or do you want to create something that you love? Because you can go go either route. It's hard. Like when you wake up, some days you don't want to create content. Some days you don't want to do shit. But sometimes jobs are coming through. And like, it might be a brand that you... It depends. It might be a brand that you love. Or it might be a brand that you're like, mm, mm. But sometimes those mm, mm brands will be giving you more money than the brands you love. So... That's the kind of hardest part. Like I had a job come through during Corona and this brand was very questionable because the owner is, she's low key racist. So when it asked me to do a job, I was just like, mm, mm. I didn't take the job because there was just so much controversy around um, 
the brand owner because she low key acts like she's there for us, but she's not. She just likes white people. So I didn't take the job. So I think that's hardest. That's the hardest part sometimes because when you're an influencer, unless you own your own business and you're getting a stable income from your own brand, you kind of you kind of wait for that email where brands will be like, oh my god, let's do this let's do that let's collaborate with this and then you're like oh my god that's a big money check like, that's my next payment so normally it's really good if you're going to get like a job where it's like a six month contract or a year contract because you're going to be getting a stable income otherwise you're going to be getting jobs here and there that's why that i think that's kind of like a hard part so <coughs> damn this is spicy <laughs> i think the best part is the friends are made like um I've got an amazing group of friends that I never thought I'd ever have, like, which are influencers, to be fair. But I feel like when you're in an influencer kind of circle, it's good to have influencer friends because you kind of bring each other up. But I have friends that aren't influencers as well. But I think with being an influencer, I think just getting products that are it's quite good. It's not like a plus, but sometimes you get, like, really cute releases, the trips. But I feel like just creating your own content and a brand giving you that like freedom to create anything you want and being paid for it is amazing and i feel like just like just being in that social world where like you can just do anything like you can hop on like tiktok instagram twitter all these kind of things that are going to generate you money which is amazing that like you can do from your home like i could move to la with like a rapper and do this from his house which is crazy which i think is good but there's ups and downs to it it's not all hi i'm from instagram <laughs> buy this product because it doesn't work like that like brands expect you to like sell shit through like a swipe up link bitch no one's buying anything for a swipe up link unless they see it like 10 to 15 times that's tea actually someone asked me what country am i from so <laughs> so mom said kingston that's like barbados don't really talk to my dad as much anymore i'm not close with my mom so that's where i'm originally from but I'm from Birmingham, which is outside of London. That's what you wanted to know, so that's that question. Okay, so, sorry guys, this is so fucking good. What the fuck? Daddy, chill. This is not juicy, but I'm so sorry for eating. I'm talking about him. What's your advice who wants to be like a brand ambassador like you? So I'm not really a brand ambassador. I'm not gonna lie, I do work for I do a lot of things with boots. Obviously, I've got my own eyelashes. And I feel like when I worked at MAC or Urban Decay, I would never, ever... If you would have asked me this five years of if I was doing this, I would have been like, no, no, no. Maybe not five years, maybe like six years. And it definitely comes down to hard work because, oh my God, I got the most rudest, like, YouTube comment the other day. It was basically like, oh my God, you've been on 28K for ages. Like, why aren't you growing? It's because... I haven't put as much energy into my YouTube as I've done on Instagram. And I think YouTube is such a different platform. YouTube, you have to be so so consistent and so with it and just be on trends and be very quick and be very focused. And I'm not like that. I've actually had this YouTube channel for like 10 years. No word of a lie. I started my channel in 20, 2009. Maybe, actually, I've had it for 11 years, but... There was a time where I was at uni where I was just having so much fun, you know, thotting and bopping and having fun and I just wasn't focused on YouTube. And if I would have focused on YouTube for that amount of time, I would have been on people's levels that you're seeing today. I'm not going to lie. If I was consistent posting three times a week, even more, I would be on that level. But because I'm not, everyone is now on that YouTube bandwagon. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I feel like there's space for everyone on this youtube space instagram space tiktok space but it's just harder because more people are trying to you know jump on this bandwagon some people are trying to do it for money some people are trying to do it for just being authentic so that you've just got to know who you are but um the advice i would give is just work hard and try and concentrate on one thing i think with me i try to do too many things at once if you want to do beauty focus on beauty and do an instagram youtube and tiktok and you will flourish in at one thing then when you flourish in at one thing you can do other things like you know what i mean but definitely just work hard guys and be consistent next question <laughs> oh my god this is gonna be so hard to edit please tell us about dating your, your 30s versus 20s and your experiences so far so if you guys don't well like 
you guys didn't realize I'm actually 30. I turned 30 last year. Oh my God. How are you fucking disgusting? I haven't dated a whole lot. I feel like a lot of people come up to me and be like, oh my God, babe, you're so pretty. Like so much guys has come up to you and like chat you up. But that's not the case. I feel like in my twenties, I feel like guys come up to you, but they're not really serious. I haven't really dated a lot of guys. Like I've spoken to guys, you know, done the whole blah, 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 but I haven't dated a lot of guys. But I think in your twenties, you're trying to find who you are. Gay culture is so different to being straight guys. Like gay culture is like, I feel like it's very fast. It's very promiscuous, not in a bad way. Not every gay is promiscuous, but gay culture is very promiscuous. Like imagine if I had a boyfriend and he dumped me, he could go on an app and find someone the next day to date or sleep with. That's just the way it is. Like I feel like when you're in your twenties, you're not really looking to like settle down or um you know have like a serious relationship some people are but in your 30s now i'm 30 i know what i want i know i don't take shit from anyone and i know that like i'm not about to be messed around by any guy or be with anyone that i don't want to be with i just want to be happy and grow together with someone do you know what i mean so it's a, it's a hard question to answer but gay culture is just super super different to straight culture like it's just i can't even explain it it'll just have to be another video guys because it's just so mind bubbling you know what i mean yup okay so next question is how did you even get into makeup so long story short i had really bad skin i had a best friend at the time who's still my friend but we're not as best friends shout out to you Facebook, because you got me on Mac if you're watching this and he wore up makeup and he was the first person to bring me to Mac. And my first Mac product was called Moisture Blend. It was a compact, it was a cream foundation. And at the time I hated powder. So I bought it and that's how I got into makeup and I loved it. And then since then he taught me about makeup and like what to wear, what I should buy. And I moved from Birmingham to London, went to Greenwich Uni. Studied drama and English, did nothing with my degree, <laughs> hated it. Then when I left, applied for Mac. My artistry skills, artistry skills weren't good. So they gave me a host job because the person that interviewed me at the time liked black guys. <laughs> so she gave me the host position. So this was when Mac was busier than it is now. So a host, a host at Mac was, imagine I had my desk here, I would have a clipboard because this was when Mac was a booming. And because Mac was so booming, they needed a host. And when someone would come up to Mac, they would want, oh, hey, can you just get me a foundation shade? I don't know my shade, but I would have to say, oh, I'm so sorry, miss or sir, but we're so busy. You have to wait in the queue. They'll be like, excuse me, but like, I'm so sorry. There's 25 people waiting for a foundation match. And they'll be so baffled because they'll be like, um, why do I have to wait in a queue when I just want to know my foundation match? Mac was so busy at the time, but we couldn't just get anyone and do a foundation match. Everyone wanted everything. People wanted makeup in 60s. People wanted their full makeup done. It was just crazy. So that's how, that's how I got into makeup. And then I met so many friends through Mac, Chloe, Nakana, everyone. And then they taught me kind of like tricks on the shop floor. Guys, honestly, some of you guys are going to makeup school, but you learn so much on the shop floor about just dealing with different skin tones, just dealing with like foundations, how to match people, how to match Asian skin, how to match black skin. You know what? I really rate a makeup artist. If you can do black and Asian skin, I rate you because white skin, not white, but well, Caucasian skin isn't easy, but it's like one of the easiest skin con skin con skin tones to do. Because when you go to Mac yet in terms, I, I can look at someone and be like, you're at NW20, you're at NC20, you're at NW15. You can just notice that, but with black skin, you can't do that. Because some people would always be like, okay, you're at NW45, you're at NW45, you're at NW45. No, babes, I'm at NW45 here. I'm at NC50 around here. I've got pigmentation and I get keloids. So how are you gonna deal with that? And not many artists could deal with that. So when I went to Mac, I learned so much. So that's how I got into makeup, but that's a whole nother story as well. But that's how I got into makeup basically, but it's just so hard guys. So I read makeup artists that can do any skin tone. <laughs> Big boobs. What? 
Big boobs? What? Child. <laughs> I'm joking. How do you have big lips? So, let me just talk to you guys because I get this question so many times. So basically, I've had filler done. I've had my lips done. Had my cheeks done. I've had filler in my nose. Filler in my jaw. I've not. I've never gone under the knife yet. I did want to go under the knife, but I don't want to go under the knife until I find that perfect person. I really wanted my nose done because. Even though my nose isn't that big, I just want my nose done, but I don't want to get it done yet. I don't even know if I want it done still. I've had, I've been getting, I got my lips done years ago. If you look at my old videos, my lips were atrocious. They just were not cute. Oh, hold on. What is, what is this? Oh. So I got my lips done, they were atrocious, and um, people are like, oh my God, you're black. Why are you getting your lips done? First of all, if you look at your favorite celebs, they're getting their lips done, but you just don't know. When I got my lips done the first time, I was getting too much filler and my lips looked awful i'm gonna try and insert pictures somewhere my lip border had gone everything had gone it was awful but um if you find someone that's good they would do you amazingly if you look at like i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna name up any celebrities but a lot of celebs have had their lip line done or something done to make their lip line a bit more plump but it's very natural mine's a bit um over exaggerated because i kind of like that look but i had my lips done um, I got to Flora's Cosmetic and I've got, no, I've only got to Flora's Cosmetic, I'll put the description down below. But um, I would never say to anyone, get filler, because no one needs filler. I like this look and people are like, oh, you only get it because you're insecure? Shut the fuck up, man. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, I want to get it because I like that look. Like, I like the way I look because, child, what the? I like the way I look because I like looking over-exaggerated. I like the cheekbones, I like the lips. I ain't looking like a slag. <laughs> I'm joking, but I like this look. If you don't like it, then, then why are you watching me? Like, I never promote filler on my YouTube channel. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you where I got it done. And I'm, I'm never going to be a person to be like, well, girl, I don't know why I got it done. You need to find your own. But with lips, definitely start smaller. I might get them dissolved because they're looking a bit too big, but my cheeks, bitch. Did I lie? My cheeks are banging. I love my cheeks. Even though they're a bit much, I just love them because I just love them. I got my cheeks done at Flawless and at Miss Hudson. I already go to those two places, but I love my cheeks. They are a bit over-exaggerated, but I wouldn't get any more in them. But with filler, definitely make sure you go to the right person and look at their Instagram page and make sure they're uh, just a really good professional because everyone's doing filler now. Like, it's just so common, but I don't know. I feel like filler is just a taboo, like... Everyone's getting injectables, but it just depends where you go, but that's a whole team. What's something that a person should look out for when they want a makeup brand, when they want to put out a makeup brand? So, the makeup industry is so saturated. Everyone's doing bronzers now. As you guys know, I love a bronzer. Everyone's doing liquid lipsticks. I feel like if you're going to do a makeup brand in 2020, make sure it's fucking like inclusive. But I feel like don't start with complexion because it's the hardest. If your shade ranges don't bang, you're going to get dragged. Do something that's very like, I don't know. You know who's a really good example? Mariana Hewitt. She didn't do makeup, but she did a skincare line called Summer Fridays. And she did a mask called Summer, um, Jet Lag Mask. And when you hear the word jet lag, you automatically think, Ooh, I always feel jet lag from a flight. This mask has sold like thousands and the mask is banging. So definitely try and like find a niche, something that people want. Like everyone's got concealers and foundations and contours and highlights, but people are always gonna want those things. But if you're gonna create a highlight, do something different. Like Patrick Tarr, he did a spray on highlight, even though there wasn't a lot of colors in it. He did something that was very, very different and it looks really, really nice. So that do something different. That's what I'm gonna say. This is gonna make me so fat. Look at what I got on. Look at this. Giving you very pretty woman vibes. This is from um, a brand called, I can't remember the brand, but it's very hoish. So you need hard. Let me look at these questions. I feel like I'm eating so much. Is it, is it a bit messy? I'm acting like a hoe. Anyone you wish you were with during quarantine during this time? No, I do, but I've had people that have had Corona in my personal life. So I can see anyone who I want to see after this whole thing has phased out. If I was to get someone sick, that would be the worst nightmare ever. But low key, 
there's someone who I want to see after the quarantine, but I can wait. My hand game is very strong. So, you know, <laughs> have you got the D lately? How to the fucking no. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. Sis, I'm not trying to play my life. I'm not trying to catch Corona. Like, I know friends that are getting the D and that's down to them. Each of their own, I'm not judging you, but with me, no, it's not worth it. Actually, it depends if, you, if you're if you dating someone and you know that they've been in self-isolation and haven't been seeing other girls or guys, do it, but, no, don't do it, but I can understand, but I personally just don't have the time for it, but girl, when this isolation is over, ho level 100. <laughs> What I'm saying, this is fucking amazing. This is so good. Hold on, come on, Sam. Have you ever fantasized about a friend that is still your friend? So, <laughs> me and my friend were talking about this the other night. So, we used to know these people that were friends and they all used to sleep together. And this is very common in the gay community. You be friends with someone and you're gonna sleep with them. How are you fucking your friend? How are you gonna sleep with your friends and then go out with them the next day and they've got a boyfriend? Hell no. You know what? I've got some very good looking friends and I've seen a lot of my friends naked because they're so comfortable with each other. I've been on holiday with a lot of my friends like we've been to Barcelona, Miami, America and sometimes we just get naked in front of each other or just, we're just very comfortable. But with me, when you're my friend, you're my friend. I'm not gonna have I fantasized about anyone? Actually, maybe one person, maybe one pe maybe one person. But this person wasn't my friend friend, they were like, a friend of a friend and they were like fucking hot. I was like, bitch, you can break my back any day and snap me, give me whiplash. But a true friend, like a close friend, I'm not gonna fantasize you about, I'm not gonna go there because if we were to go there, like it wouldn't be the same and I would rather treasure our friendship than have lust, but, there's been friends where I've been like, oh my God, you're so good looking. Like, how are you single? But I would never go there because child, when you sleep with a friend, <laughs> it just gets fucking messy. Messy AM. I've got some girls that I slept with their friends and they're getting beaten up in clubs because they didn't know the friend had two girlfriends. Well, a baby mother, but that's a whole nother story. And I don't want to get a cease and desist. <laughs> um, how not to post pictures of my other half, by the way, love you. You know what, so, I feel like when I was seeing someone at the time, they didn't get that, like, I was protecting them from not putting them on social media because people on social media can judge who you go out with and if someone was to judge the person I love and go out with and say something nasty, it would really hurt me than them talking about me personally. So always say to someone, if you don't want your relationship to be social media focused, do not put them online. You know who is a good example of who I really watch? Aaliyah J. No, Aaliyah's face. She was dating someone and then she broke up with them. Not my business. She sp I don't think she's spoken about it, but now she was someone new. She did Instagram live and she said that she would never show that person because people are so well invested into you and that person. They want to know how you met them, how you fucking, Top or bottom, white or black, blah, blah, blah. I would never put a relationship on social media ever. Actually, it depends if I got married, maybe. I feel like you just never know. Like, imagine like um, I was dating someone for like how many years and I suddenly put them on YouTube and then we broke up and then you're, you're saying to me, well, where's this person? And I'm like, well, he cheated on me with my best friend's brother's auntie's brother's second cousin from Alabama. But you guys are like, well, We've invested into you as a couple on YouTube. Well, you're by yourself now, so we don't want to watch you. So what are you going to give? So I always say, don't really do the whole couple shit if you ain't serious. So if you ain't serious, don't post them online. But I wouldn't post them my other half online anyway, unless there's a ring on my finger, bitch. You know? The best weekend you've ever had with Bay. It wasn't a weekend. It was a trip, bitch. I got flewed out. Flewed out the fuck. So we went to Hong Kong. Was it Hong Kong or Singapore? We went to Singapore. That was probably one of the best trips I've ever had in my life in Hong Kong. And you know when like you, 
I've never felt so happy and so free and Hong Kong was just one of those places that was so clean, even Singapore and, and Bangkok actually. It was, it was actually free, I can't name, it was actually the whole free and I've never just felt so happy and so free and just, I don't know, like you're in this amazing place where they do the best food, you've got the best designers and you're just with someone who you really love and it's just so amazing and you know, you look bad, you've got, you know, you've got your little Louboutin or your Prada and that's one of the best places I've ever been to, like Hong Kong, Singapore and um, where else? Bangkok, yeah, Thailand. Just one of the best places when we flew out together. It was just amazing. We flew business. It was amazing. It was just so fucking good. Like, oh, I've still got a bag actually. I can see from here that I bought when I was in Hong Kong. And when I look at it, it always reminds me of the time we went there together. But okay, we're gonna go through some questions that people have DM me. They wanna remain anonymous. Some of them are, I just, I know of, but because I've seen them before, or my friend knows them. Not my friend, but my friend of a friend, but they're gonna remain anonymous. Like, to know I'm watching this, I'm not gonna re reveal any names. This is proper private, and these are really serious situations, but. <laughs> well, I'm so lit! This first dilemma, no, this first dilemma is mad. This first dilemma, this one's good, man. This question is mad. My boyfriend got me and my cousin pregnant at the same time. I know. You know me from Birmingham, but please don't say my Instagram name. Love you so much. Well, babe, I'm very shocked this has happened. The guy you're going out with, if you're watching this, is a fucking dickhead. I know who he is and what he's about because we used to go to school together, but he was a year above me. He got you and your cousin pregnant and you're asking me what to do. First of all, don't do it. I'm guessing you're both months apart, so... If you watch Wendy Williams, Wendy Williams rever rever refers to these things as hood twins. So, hood twins are when a guy gets two women pregnant at the same time and they're both due in the same year. It's very hood. So first of all, babes, your, your cousin, cousin is, is a, a bitch. bitch. When she got with your guy, she knew you were with him because I know she knew she you were with him because you're like, how many months? I think you're like, you're due in like maybe four months. She's pregnant, I think she's like three months, whatever. She is a bitch. And first of all, you can't fight someone like that. You're pregnant, babes. First of all, pregnant two pregnant women fighting is very ghetto. It's, <coughs> it's not cute. You don't need to focus your energy on your cousin. You need to focus your energy on that fuck boy who got you pregnant, who's a fucking dickhead anyway, who is I'm not even going to say anything too much because I don't want a cease and desist. But what I'm going to say is have the baby, maintain your health, wait till your cousin has the baby. This was me personally. I would lock, I wouldn't even lock him off because I think your baby, everyone's child needs a father, but he would not see me for a long time. Have your baby. Make sure your cousin has a baby. Don't ever start having arguments with her because no one's got time to be having miscarriages or high blood pressure when they're pregnant. As soon as she has the baby, the baby's healthy, your baby's healthy, see her on site. You're getting it's fucked, fucked up, up, bitch. I'm, I'm fucking, fucking you up. up. You're getting fucked up. The boyfriend's getting fucked up. The mom's getting fucked up. Everyone's getting fucked up. How are you sleeping with my expected baby father you're my family and you knew i was pregnant from at the same time i want to talk to her again but the only thing is hold on hold on you're cousins but you both have siblings that are for the same guy does that does that make them brother 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 and sister and cousins at the same time what I'm gonna say is, babe, don't fight this girl now. Don't fight her, put your energy into this guy. But basically, just remain healthy, remain calm, have the baby, wait for her to have the baby, and I'll just fuck her up, I'm sorry. Period. All right, as you get a towel, this stuff is so messy. So let me show you how much I've gone through. So I've still got a lot there. So it's actually really, really nice. I'm actually really enjoying this. I actually like doing a book bang, but I really wish I had someone with me because we could actually banter through these questions, but when this quarantine's over, I really want to get my friends to do it. It'd be really, really fun. So, my boyfriend wants to have an open relationship, but I don't want one. I know he's sleeping with other people. So, 
This guy is gay because it looks at like his profile. Um, in gay relationships, it's very common to have an open relationship. Especially, we've been together for a long time. Um, I don't really know if I could have an open relationship. I get why people have them because when you meet someone, imagine, first of all, when you've been with someone for 20 years, in our generation now, it's, I feel like it's not normal to um, be with someone for 20 years and not experience anyone else. That's what I kind of feel, but I feel like I could be with someone and not sleep with someone, do you know what I mean? But I, I've seen like documentaries and people talking about it because one person to be connected to you, to be connected to you for the rest of your life is quite hard, especially in our generation. I'm not talking about the 80s and the 90s. In our generation, where we have Instagram, Facebook, OnlyFans, everything. I think it's very, very hard to be faithful. But um, if you feel like your boyfriend's having a relationship without telling you, even, and you haven't agreed with it, I feel like you should leave him because, um, first of all, is he having sex protected? Do you know who he's sleeping with? And I feel like. Gay world, there's so much people who are catching so many diseases and it's so fucking sad. We've got corona to look to look to look out for anyway. I would break up with the person, but it just depends on your situation. I've got many friends in open relationships and I don't know if I could do it. It's so hard. Oh. <laughs> it's so hard. And I feel like I give you applause for doing it. But if my boyfriend said to me, Oh hey Gary, I'm gonna see you in two hours, I'm just gonna fuck a guy down the street and I'll come back. Don't come back. Do not come back, sweetheart, because I'm gonna fuck you and that guy up because I personally couldn't mentally deal with it, but a lot of guys deal with it, but they do it because you've had a connection with this person, you love each other, but your mind wanders, you want other dick, you want other ass, which is understandable, but it's hard. But let me know how this goes on if you're watching this because it's a bit mad. This question is, It's, fu it's fucking mad. Are you a top or bottom? What type of guys are you into and do you deep throat? So I've answered this at the start of the question. And you know what? I'm not gonna say too much, but bitch, I have skills. I have skills. I can do a handstand. I can do a backflip. I can suck a dick. That's what I'm going to say. I've already got a few more questions and it's more buckets in the end because it's going to be too long. This question is juicy. As a black gay male, do you find getting work harder in a white dominated female industry, even though males of a particular color get in the same jobs? Child, this question was so. Oh, I must not talk about that one. Just me and my friend were talking about this. So I'm not gonna name her name because I love her so much and she's such a dear friend to me. And I wouldn't want her to get in any trouble. But me and her went to an event before the corona started. I walked into this event. I was already late. When I walked into this event, I suddenly felt uncomfortable because. I was the only black person in this event, which shouldn't be happening in 2020. I felt uncomfortable and because of the brand, they have a certain demographic, which is rich, white to, you know. So I was like, oh my God, uh, where are the other black people? Shakisha, Janae, wh wh where are you? So anyway, luckily my friend ap uh, appeared and Luckily they set off neck together and um, I just felt so comfortable with her and we just spoke about the industry and how um, sometimes this is really hard for being black or just being Asian or being a person of colour because even though people don't want to admit it, it's like three times harder for us in any industry like it could be modelling, influencer, um, technology, it's because we have to work ten times harder because it's, it's just what it is like Someone will be like, oh no, you're, just, you're, you're being backwards. That is it's the truth, bitch. We have to work harder because first of all, I'm a black guy who wears makeup in a female white dominated industry. And not not to get me wrong, there's some there's some brands out there that fully fuck, like fully don't give a fuck and like, they will work with any skin tone, which I respect. Obviously Fenty, 
Milk Makeup, House Laboratories, um, L'Oreal, um, Urban Decay, you got all these brands, but there's some brands that will, will send you the product, but will never ever work with you because you're not in that demographic. Like they're thinking, okay, we're gonna send you the product just to, just to like sprinkle the spices, but you're like, we, we, we know that your demographic will never ever buy a product. How fucking dare you? Bitch, black people are buying, buying your products. People are buying your products. Like you don't know that shit. Like how dare you? So I get really offended when I hear things like that. So there's certain brands you might see me not um, advertise even though you've seen me get it on Instagram because I feel like you don't deserve my time because you're taking the piss. Like you invite me to do things on counter or you invite me to do certain things for you. And you, when I ask you for a certain product, you're like, Oh, I'm really, really sorry. We don't have that in stock. Like the shade isn't very popular. It's just a shade we don't sell as much, but I'm looking at someone else's feed and you're sending them three shades because that is popular. But why are you advertising this shade on a certain website, but you're not sending it to me because my followers or supporters on YouTube want to see it, but you're saying it's not popular. And that kind of shit hurts me. That's why I don't be promoting certain brands because it's just fake to be fair. It's just like, I feel like the whole diverse thing was a whole trend. The whole um, working with male boy things was a trend. Not much a trend, but people are just doing it to jump on it. So that's why I don't work with a few brands, even certain, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Even certain brands I used to work with, like, they don't fuck with me no more because I don't, I'm not sure why, but I haven't got time for them because I worked for you, but you don't fuck with me, so I don't give a fuck. I'm not gonna beg for you to work with me. If you don't wanna work with me, then fools on you, boo. So I'm gonna end this mukbang here because it's getting a bit messy and I'm getting a bit drunk and I don't wanna say something that's gonna end my career. <laughs> But um, if you guys have enjoyed this mukbang, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. A lot of you guys wanted me to talk about like brands and Fenty bronzers and stuff, but I feel like that's not interesting. Like I can do that on a separate video. Um, and I feel like it's just good to be so real and talk about all these things that are really interesting. I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be, but I hope you guys stayed to the end and watched it with a glass of wine and a snack. I'm really late at the moment, so if I'm acting a bit crazy, don't mind me. It's a Friday night, it's 10.28 and I'm feeling very tipsy. I love you guys so much. And thank you guys for all the suggestions on Instagram, YouTube and Twitter. I want to do it a mukbang again, but hopefully I can do one soon with my friends or my other friends. So um, thank you so much to obviously Be Fed again. Uh, Be Fed are the ones that supplied the food. I obviously did pay for it and I did a contribution, um, but the food was actually very, very, very nice so i shall see you guys in my next video because this should go up on sunday and have a lovely weekend guys love you so much please stay safe and don't be sleeping with anyone's man <laughs> <laughs>